beautiful day here in my neck of the woods. The windows are open, the birds are singing, so if you hear some outdoor background summer sounds, please just enjoy it along with me. Um, I come to you today and I'm going to be making a fabric uh, wall hanging of sorts. And I'd like to start out by saying that there are a number of extremely talented crafters out there who have done several, several versions of these beautiful wall hangings. And at the end of the video, I'm going to put some links um, to some of the ones that I have been inspired by. Um, the one that uh, inspired me to do this one was uh, Scrap and Happy, and she does some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous work. And uh, as I said, I will put her link at the end of the video along with some others that I think you might enjoy seeing their work. And before we get started, I'd like to touch on a subject that um, has been bothering me lately, and that is the uh, intimidation that seems to be present in the craft world um, within the last year or so. There are um, a few self-proclaimed uh, professional crafters out there who um, either intentionally or unintentionally have created intimidation and feelings of inferiority amongst a lot of the new crafters out there. I've heard several of these comments myself and I would just like to say that um, to call oneself a professional or a master um, is nothing more than that. You're, you're naming yourself that. It doesn't make you a professional. It doesn't make you a master. And it doesn't make one any more talented or creative than anyone else. Crafting is about being inspired and the reason that myself and other crafters do these videos is with the hopes that we can inspire someone out there to pick up whatever they have around the house to maybe even you know buy the products um, that are used in this video which will also be listed at the end of the video the links to what I've used and create something of their own if you want to create exactly what I've done and you would like some help, please feel free to ask me. I do this for one reason, and that is to inspire, to help others um, gain some confidence, um, to step out there and try something, something that they think they like, or some they, they may see this and think, hey, I could do that, but maybe I could do it this way. And that's what we all do. Um, we look at things and we find them beautiful and we think, wow, I'd really like to try that. There are some out there who, because they think that they're the best, um, don't want to willingly share uh, what they know or how to do it, um, I would like to see that come to an end. I would like to see our crafting community become one of support, encouragement, sharing, inspiration, and just the happy environment that crafting is supposed to be. I know personally of a number of ladies who um, either craft for therapy, uh, maybe they've had a tragedy in their life, or maybe they've had an illness or have an illness that um, doesn't bring a whole lot of joy into their life, and, and crafting is their joy. We don't want people to step on that. We don't want people to inhibit others from doing what brings them so much joy. I know that when I'm crafting, I am at my happiest. And there are those who, whether it's jealousy or insecurity, I, I don't know what the reasons are, but they seem to want to belittle others, to attack others, to talk down about others' work. 
and um, that has been called bullying. To me, it's just basically insecurity and ignorance when people do those kind of things. And it's not necessary. If you don't like somebody's work, just walk on past, scroll on past, don't say anything. Just leave it alone. Do not take away that person's joy and that person's inspiration. You do not have the right to do that. It's wrong. It's immoral. It's just, it's horrible and it needs to stop. I want to encourage you new crafters out there or maybe even people who have been crafting for years but have been nervous to step out there and put their neck out there basically for fear that they're going to be attacked and, and people are going to say bad things about their work. Let me just say this to you who may be feeling that, do not let the few, and there are very, very, honestly, very few who would stoop to those levels. Don't let them rain on your parade. Don't let them discourage you. Step out there because there are so many of us that would love to help you, to encourage you, to share with you. And if there is anything, anything that I can personally help you with, I will do my utmost. If I don't know how to do something, I know that there are dozens of crafters out there that I could probably turn to and say, hey, you know, can, can we do something like this? We'll do our best to help you. And I want you also to understand that when you create, you inspire us to create even more. We love to be copied. We love to be um, duplicated because that means that we inspired you. We, we created, we lit that fire of creativity in you. And that's what this is all about. And one last thing is there's been a lot of talk about um, people who are supposed to be educators um, making statements about copywriting their materials. Um, to this, I would say one thing. If you're going to make videos as an educator to teach others how to do what you have the knowledge to do, do not copyright it. Let others learn from you. Share what you have with them. Don't try to intimidate people into not duplicating your work because you claim it's copyrighted. There's a lot of talk about this right now. Um, and it's ridiculous. Uh, there are those who have made claims to have copyrights to an entire group of crafting style. That is not even possible. I'm not going to go into copyright laws because I'm not an attorney. But I will say this. For the people who make these claims, um, there are so many people who have done it before you. Yours is not original. You have done what all of us do. You have watched someone else create, loved what they did, wanted to put your spin on it, to do it your way, to give it your mark that does not give you copyrights. Not at all. You are a crafter. We are all the same. Some of us have been doing it for longer. Some of us are just getting started. But we do it for one reason. For the love of crafting. So, in closing, I just want to say, be kind to each other. Be supportive to each other. Give each other the hands up, the encouragement, the courage to show their work. Because... I know there are so many of you out there that are so talented. And if you don't have the ability, um, such as a web camera or something like that, to share your work, to do a video, please send your pictures to me. I would love to share them for you. We want everyone to share in this huge, huge crafting world. There's more than enough talent. There's more than enough room for everybody. So with that said, let's start today's project. What I've done is taken a piece of muslin and I tea dyed it. I just doubled it over and sewed 
two edges here, and then I just sat and kind of frayed the edges a little bit so that it gives it that kind of shabby look. And a little side note, um, when you're fraying these, you're going to get a lot of strings. Don't throw those away. These create those little fibers that you see a lot of people use in their other projects. Just get yourself a little container, a little Ziploc bag, and as you're working with fabrics that fray, toss them in there. Before you know it, you've got a whole bag full of fibers. Um, it, one example as I'm playing with this that comes to mind is you could take this and maybe add some fabric stiffener to it and create a little bird's nest. And it's just roughly and free and, and perfect for shabby chic. Okay, so I did an example of this is I was sent to I was it was sent to me by um, creating with details and it was originally when I got it it was this color it was just like a clear tool what I did was soak this steeped it in just regular tea and then let it air dry I was absolutely stunned at how the color took only on the edges so most of the laces, I would say all of the laces that I'm using in this project today came from creating with details. And each piece of lace that I'm going to be using was either tea dyed or coffee dyed. And what, as I'm putting these pieces together, you're not really going to be able to tell which was which. And I did this intentionally just to show you that you can get the same results using either coffee or tea to get this vintage look. And that's what I was going for. I wanted something that looked vintage, that looked aged. Um, this is one of my favorite genres. I, I love vintage and especially vintage shabby. So that's what I did in the first, that was, those were my first steps and to create this little wall hanging. So the first thing that I'm going to use in, is put this um, lace that I've set aside for the top. This is one of the laces that I tea dyed. And I am going to be using this on the top of my wall hanging. And we're going to put it right there. And I'm just going to use my, my hot glue gun to attach this. If I were not doing this for a video, I probably would take the time to use the sewing machine um, just to stitch this on there, just because I like the look of the stitching on it. But for purposes of the video, I'm just going to use my hot glue gun. And we're just going to put that down all the way across. And you don't need a lot of glue. You just need something to tack it down. And we'll just do this all the way across the top. And this glue gun, if you don't have one of these, this is a Sherbonder Detail Glue Gun. And um, Creating with Detail sells these. And I love this glue gun because of the detail tip. You can get into some really small places that some of the other um, glue guns that work very well um, are just too big to get into. But I love the detail tip on this. And the other thing that I really like about this glue gun, while well, every glue gun has the glue strings, this seems to have fewer glue strings than um, some of the other older ones that I've used. And if you're a crafter, you know what it's like to be wrapped up in a web of glue strings. It's not pleasant. So we've got that glued down. And now I am simply going to cut off the excess. I don't do this beforehand because I want to make sure that it's glued down exactly where I want it so that the ends are going to match up. If I've, I've made the mistake of, of thinking that I had it cut just right in the past only to find out that I cut it too short. So now I just simply glue it and then cut it. It's just easier for me. Now the next thing I'm going to do is apply this trim to the sides. And this is another one that I have, I don't, I can't even tell you which one I, I tea stained and coffee stained because I don't know. 
Um, no, I'm sorry. We're going I'm doing this backwards. We're going to do the bottom because I'm going to take these pieces and put them on the sides to make it give it kind of that frame look. So this particular piece is another one that I have tea dyed, and it is also from Creating with Details. And this is going to go across the bottom like this. I'm going to use the same process, use my glue gun, and as you can see here, um, there are some uneven edges. I'm not going to worry about that because after I get it glued back on, I will just cut off anything that needs to be cut off. Part of the shabby chic look is that it's not perfect. Um, I, I was told a long time ago um, by and I think it was it was somebody in the art industry and they said you know there's no such thing as perfect even in nature so we need to stop driving ourselves crazy trying to create something that's perfect we're not going to accomplish it because even nature does not do that now after I get the next layer of lace that I'm going to be putting on here I will attach that a little bit better. But for now, it's attached good enough, so I'm just going to take my scissors and just sort of even up the ends and just cut off the excess here. That sound that you hear in the background is my blinds blowing in the wind. I so love this. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting, just like I'm sure all of you have been waiting for this wonderful, wonderful weather. Okay, now I'm going to attach the side pieces and using the same method again. And make sure when you're doing this um, that you have the right side of the lace. Sometimes it's hard to tell and if, it, if you can't really tell, don't worry about it. But sometimes there is an obvious right and wrong side. I've definitely made the mistake of um, putting it wrong side up in a project but I don't tell anybody and if I don't tell them they probably won't notice. I'm my worst critic as I'm sure all of you are. We criticize ourselves about things that other people probably don't even notice. So we're just going to use a very liberal amount of the glue because I don't like it to be hard and crunchy. There's no need to glue every single inch of the lace. It gives it that movement, that freedom, and I think it just looks better. But you may have a different opinion. And if you're viewing this and you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment. Um, if you have ideas or suggestions, I would also love to hear those. Um, my little brain will only hold so many ideas and I know I know there are probably a bazillion more ideas that you all have that could make this look even more awesome or if you make one I would love to see pictures please I love looking at other people's work I'm, I'm just I'm so inspired by people and I like to tell people when they inspire me because I like to hear if I've inspired somebody um, just because we love doing what we're doing. We, we love doing this. And I'm happy when I'm in my craft room. I, I'm just, I'm free. I'm at peace. I don't have any worries. And that's what I want you all to feel, especially when you're watching videos. Just relax and enjoy it. Let your mind go. Live in the moment. And think about, oh, wow, what if I did this? Or what if I did that? Or what if I tried this? That's what it's all about, seeing something and, and making it your own. Okay, so now we have the top, the bottom, and the side lace pieces done. Now we're going to start to layer some pieces. And what I'm going to do at the bottom is that I have another gorgeous, gorgeous piece of lace, again, from Creating with Details that I am going to add right here. 
it kind of gives it that, oh, I don't know, kind of floral feel, I guess, for lack of a better word. And I'm just going to glue this right over top of these laces. Now on this particular one, because it does have this little spot, I'm just going to put a dab of glue there. Again, we don't need to go crazy with the glue gun. It's not necessary. It's fabric. It's supposed to move. Now, if you like it to be, you know, glued all the way, way down, by all means, do it. You could even use um, fabric glue, which is another thing that probably would be more advisable on a project such as this rather than a hot glue gun because I will tell you, if it, and you probably know this, but I'll just share it anyway, um, glue guns are susceptible to temperatures, hot and cold, and it can cause the glue, especially in hot, humid weather, it literally will remelt the glue and it'll come apart. So I don't recommend using a hot glue gun for things that you want to be really, really permanent or like if you were going to sell something or give something as a gift. Um, you know, you want to make sure that it's got a little more permanency and it's not going to be subjected to the elements, even inside, because humidity can be a killer on um, hot glue. So there's that layer. I'm just, again, going to cut that piece off. And I don't throw these away either because I may even use this somewhere on this canvas. I don't know. Now, I will tell you that originally when I was going to do this canvas, and this is all part of crafting, is that when I um, originally thought I was going to do this canvas, I thought, well, I'll do a, a pocket canvas and, and put pockets, which I could have done just as easily. But then I started pulling out all of these elements that I'm going to be using in this project. And the more I pulled out, the more I began to see something else emerging. So I completely changed the direction that I'm going in. And I know as crafters, you have experienced this as well. Now I have this other piece of beautiful, beautiful lace um, that I'm going to see how it looks right here. Uh, we'll come back to that. I'm not sure. But down at the bottom, this is another piece that um, is an applique from Creating with Details. And this was completely white until I tea dyed it. Again, trying to get that vintage aged look. This piece is going to go, I'm just going to turn this so I can get it centered, um, is going to go right here at the bottom just like that and I'll show you what's going to go on there in just a moment right now I'm just going to glue this on here um, to attach it again your um, fabric glues would be a perfect type of medium or adhesive I should say uh, to use on these projects um, because they are flexible and you don't get hard crunchy bits when you're um, wanting to feel the fabric. There's you, you, you don't even have to use a sewing machine the way I did to create the um, background for this wall hanging. You could just as easily glue these pieces down when you're doing it if you don't have a sewing machine. Um, as I keep saying, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Use your creativity. Use your imagination. Use what you have. And just play. So this is what we have so far. Now, on here, the flower that I showed you a little bit earlier, the one that I tea dyed, is going to go right here. Again with the hot glue, 
Now this one I'm using a little bit more glue because um, this is fabric and while this is lightweight it it may sag a bit in spots so I want to make sure that that backing is completely adhered. Now as you can see this um, piece kind of frames the flower and it gives it that feeling of maybe a uh, like a tulip you know like the, the the flower is opening up that's what I got when I was playing with it you may see something totally different now the next part that we're going to do and this is the part that I did not tea dye I am going to I had these um, crocheted and stiffened um, hats. These my mother had. Um, mom used to make, love to make these um, rag dolls. And then mom got bored really easily when she, when she was crafting. So um, she had all kinds of like half started projects. And I'll tell you how long she had these. When I took off the price tag off of this one, I think it said 49 cents. Uh, you can't buy anything for 49 cents today, so I know she had this around for a while. Now, as you can see, I did not dye this one. And I did that on purpose because while I wanted the vintage look, the hanger that I'm going to be using for this project is more of a, a, an antique white. Still looks vintage, but I didn't want this piece to be completely monochromatic. Well, it's still muted. Um, I wanted to give it just a little bit of different hues in the whites and the tans. So that was my reasoning for not dyeing this. That, and I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. So this is going to be the top piece. I'm not going to attach this yet because we've got some work to do on the hat. Well, it's cute just like it is. I, I have another vision for it, which I'll get to in a minute. But what I want to show you is, you're probably asking, what is she putting in the center? Well, I am using a paper mache dress bodice that I made from a Barbie doll again. Awesome tutorials out there to show you how to do this one. Um, Scrap and Happy has an amazing tutorial on her bodices, and she does some absolutely incredible work. So this is going to go right beneath here, and while the scale isn't exactly correct, it still gives the illusion that. It's a flowing dress with a vintage um, hat. And that's kind of what I was going for when I started playing with all the pieces that I would pull out that I pulled out. So I'm gonna take the hat off for right now and we're going to focus on the dress. After I put these two, these were these flowers right here were sent to me in a rack, um, no, in a swap, by a lovely lady from a group that I used to belong to. And I do apologize um, for not immediately remembering exactly who it came from because I was involved in a lot of swaps. But if you're watching this, if you happen to see this video and you sent me these, please make a comment and remind me. I, you know, blonde, aged, I don't know. I just don't remember a lot of stuff lately. Hope I don't forget how to craft. So I again am going to just attach these with a little bit of hot glue. And as you can see, I'm not covering the entire surface. I'm just dabbing the most important parts where I want it to stay down. I like having little to me, this looks like it has movement in the flower, where not all the pieces are glued down flat, and I like that. See how it curls in some spots? I don't want to ruin that by mashing it down with, with glue and 
making it look unnatural. Again, I'm going to do the same thing with this. And as you can see, I have not, there are still, it looks like this was part of a um, doily or maybe a tablecloth. There's little pieces on here that I did not cut off. I kind of like the way it looks. It just looks worn. So I'm leaving them on there. But if that would bug you, because I know it would some people, just go ahead and snip them off. These are not identical um, pieces. Again, I like that. I like that being not natural, not, not totally symmetrical. Just dabbing this here and there just to make sure it adheres. And I did not put any glue in the center of either of these. Okay. That was the other two pieces that I wanted to put on here. And, and I, I have piles around me of different pieces that I thought, well, maybe I'll use this and then maybe not. So as I go along, you may see me put things down, pull things off, which is what we crafters do. So now we're going to work on the dress. I had some of these little um, mesh rosettes. And again, I tea dyed them, coffee dyed them. I'm not sure which one I used, truthfully, because they all look pretty much the same. Uh, so whatever you are, coffee drinker, tea drinker, it's going to look the same no matter what. I am just going to take these rosettes and this is going to be glued on the bodice right here. And the nice thing with all of these fabrics is that each one of them um, takes dye differently or, or stain or whatever you're, you happen to be doing. And you could easily dye these with fabric dye as well um, if you wanted to give it color. And that would be gorgeous. I was thinking about my one of my favorite colors is like the aquas. I, oh, I just love those colors. Um, and you could easily you know, dye some of your, your fabrics with those fabric dyes to get whatever color would match your decor or someone else's decor. Now this bodice is, I don't have any, any particular theme in mind for this bodice, um, but it could easily, easily um, be a wedding gown, um, a formal, anything that you wanted it to be. Um, whatever is in your imagination, what you're when you're creating this is what it will be. And you know, who knows? When I'm done with this, we may see some sort of fashion or something that gives us the idea of what it might be. And that's really all there is too the bodice. You just glue it on there, tuck, cut, just play with it so you get it, like it the way, get it the way you like it to look. Now here I am going to use um, this particular lace right here. I'm going to put this on here but I am going to do this last because the next step, I want to show you that this will be covered with, you won't see the bodice at all. The first thing I'm going to do is create the bottom part of the dress. And to do this, I have pulled out various um, laces. I have pieces of torn muslin. I have some string pearls. I have some ribbon. I have some tool pieces that I've cut and what we're going to do is just take our bodice and just start gluing these starting at the front and just gluing it so that it has that that fringy look as I am kind of a, a hippie at heart and I love fringe. Now you don't have to worry about measuring these when you're doing this simply because once you get it done um, you can just cut it and I'm just going to randomly 
um, start gluing pieces. I'm not going to start with that. That should go on the back. Um, now, if you see, I did not cut any of these. Um, this one I know is going to be too long, so I'm just going to make a little notch there and just rip it. And there goes another piece of fiber that I can save for my fiber pile. And take your glue gun, put a little dab of glue. You can fold this however you want it. You can glue it flat. Um, up into my camera. Did I hit it? There we go. I got out of frame. I'm very sorry about that. Um, just take your glue gun and just start gluing the pieces of muslin, ribbon, pearls. I have some of this really cute um, ribbon and I didn't have to do anything to this particular ribbon. It was already this color. So I'm just going to put a dab of glue, glue some of that on there and I know I need to cut this off because I'll probably want to use some more. So I'm just going to cut a piece off and attach another piece of muslin and you can see it's wrinkled and that was the other thing with this when this came out of the dryer I did not wash these after they were dyed I simply put them in the dryer and heat set them um, these do not have any odor to them I actually threw some uh, dryer sheets in with them just so that it would keep them soft and um, there's no smell but I when I first did when I first tried um, the tea dyeing thing oh I, I washed it and washed out all the tea dye or coffee dye or whatever I had done and I thought well you big dummy that wasn't supposed to happen that way so I learned not to wash it after you dye it because it'll just turn like a an off-white color now I have some of these um, string pearls that I'm going to glue on here. And the whole idea behind doing this um, with these different types of fabrics and textures and beads is just to give it that free flowing movement. I love free flowing items. They're, to me they're just, yeah, it just makes you happy. It makes you feel good. I like things that are happy. You could also put a uh, chain in here, maybe add some charms. I mean, the possibilities are literally endless. And while I'm trying to be random, I don't know if you're noticing this, I just noticed it. Um, I'm actually kind of developing a pattern as I do this, trying to get it a little more sy symmetrical. I don't know why I do that. It's just the way my brain works. I admire people though who have that ability to just be random. Just pick stuff up and put it down and have it look come out looking absolutely gorgeous. I find that the more random I try to be, um, the more symmetrical it becomes. I don't know why my brain works that way, but it does. So I just go with it. Now I'm going to turn this over so that you can see what's beginning to happen here. Um, is you're starting to get that appearance of having a fringed dress. So we're going to keep gluing pieces on here and here's another one. And the other thing about when you're doing this is that these do not all have to be completely even on the bottom. You can have some shorter pieces, you can have some longer pieces. It's whatever strikes your fancy. Now this dress bodice that I that I made here um, from the Barbie, I simply cut off at the side point, like halfway between the side and the back, just so that it would still give that, um, you know, the curvature of the bodice, but would still lay flat on the fabric. That's what I was going for. I still wanted the female form, 
but it didn't want it sticking way off the, uh, the project. I'm sorry. I keep, my camera keeps moving. I must be hitting it and not realizing it. I'm trying not to make you dizzy, and I'm trying to stay in frame. Okay, so I'm going to have to make a note to stay, note to self, stay in frame. Okay, I'm just going to grab another piece of this cute little lace and glue one of those on there. And as you can see, I'm kind of building up a row here. And then you can put in yet another row behind that. You can mix in some tool, which I'm going to do here in just a second. And my next layer is going to be some tool, followed by maybe some more fabric. We'll just see how it comes out. This is why I love doing these things because they're so much fun to play with. You just never know what you're going to get. Kind of like life is a box of chocolates. So here it is so far. This is with our first layer. Again, ignore this. You're not going to see it. And when it's laying down on the fabric like this, all of this will raise up as we add the next layer. So I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to end up maybe doing three, maybe two layers of fabric. I've got some um, nylon. I guess it's nylon ribbon here that to me is a little bit too wide so I am just going to cut it down the center and use this as part of her bottom of her dress again I know this is going to be too long so we'll just stop there nothing like watching somebody cut something Sort of like watching paint dry. Again, as you can see, I am not worried about whether this is even or not. Again, if things like that bother you, um, you could take more time to measure it than I did. Excuse me if my nose sounds a little stuffy. I'm not sure whether it's a cold or allergies being that you know the weather has been so changeable um, and having all the windows open I will deal with the stuffies because I got the windows open it's actually I think around 75 here today not a cloud in the sky and that is my kind of weather okay so I got that glued in there this piece is way too long. Cut it off. Add it in here. I always get out more stuff than I need because I don't want to end up not having enough. So you can see it's starting to take shape. Okay, I'm going to do some tool now. And again, I've just taken strips of this and just kind of cut it up. I'm going to double this just to give it that little, so I don't have to use so much of it, to give it a little bit of bulk. Give it that fullness. another piece and do the exact same thing and to be honest with you um, doing this when they're not even I think adds even more interest to the piece because your eye is drawn all around instead of one to instead of one hard spot and that to me is more interesting when my eye can go all the way around in a circle and not get stuck right here in, in one spot. Look at all the glue stuck to me. Oops. I 
also have to get myself one of those um, little glue gun helper um, gadgets that they have because sometimes like especially working with fabric you need to uh, hold it but it's too hot burn your fingers so I still have to get myself one of those I think right now my fingers are just so calloused from doing that so much that I'm just off camera tripping off some of the long pieces that I left now I'm going to do one more layer of the muslin in the back and then that will complete her the bottom part of her dress now I particularly like this piece of um, muslin right here it's all wrinkled and crooked and I love that so I'm going to be using these pieces right here because I love that look it's shabby and shabby in my book is awesome I could have my entire house shabby chic but I don't know if my husband would necessarily like that although he's pretty tolerant of me I have to admit doesn't complain too much about my shabbiness. There's another piece. Again, see, when you start doing this, you're going to get pieces that have uh, little bits of string. Um, just pull them off, man them in your pile. one or two more pieces and we're just about done with the bottom of this dress and then we're going to finish up the front put her on decorate the hat and add her hanger and we will be done now I've laid this down here so that you can see um, I could add more but if I did it's going to be extremely bulky so I'm going to call that part finished now, as you can see I have got all kinds of wonky links here and while that might be kind of pretty it would cover up the flower so what I'm going to do is take some of these obvious pieces that are way too long and I'm not measuring, I'm just cutting. Um, after I get done, I will go back um, and see if I need to change it up a little bit once we place it on the can or on the, the wall hanging. That tool is kind of hard to see. I think that's pretty good like that so now we're going to do the rest of the bodice now what I'm going to do is just because I don't want this white part right here showing is I'm going to take a piece of this um, tea dyed fabric and I'm just going to cover it like that with some hot glue just to cover up that white piece the white color so you don't see that this is actually paper mache even though most people are gonna, are gonna know that's exactly what it is and I just simply glue this right behind the bodice because once this is glued you're not gonna see it Hold that for a minute. This one's not cooperating with me. 
guess I didn't hold it long enough. Okay. Now that covers up the white part, so you don't see that paper mache. I'll tell you one thing. It's, it's probably not a secret because you can see me working. My desk is a mess, or my table. When I'm crafting, it's a mess. It's just a mess. Organized chaos, I like to call it. Okay, now I have this piece of lace right here that I'm going to add over top of that piece of muslin that I just added and it will look like it's part of the dress. So I'm just going to cut off of this piece right here that I used for something else. Again, save that piece. And take the glue gun and just glue only the top part right here in the back. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll cut this piece off right here. I try to cut it so the little um, little pieces are intact when I cut it apart. So the next next project that I want to use this on, I won't have a problem being short. Just do that on there like that. I can see looking at this that we're probably going to have to trim that again. We can do that in a minute. And I think what I'm going to do possibly, and this is what I mean, you start doing it and you have an idea of what it's going to look like in your head and then when you get there it's like, hmm, it needs something. So I think maybe it needs a little rosette with a, a ribbon. I'll think on that. It needs something, but we're going to get back to that. So, we have this, and, and you'll see strings. Just pull them and add them to your fiber, fi or fiber pile. Okay, next part we're going to do is the hat. And the hat, I don't mind if this hangs off the top a little bit. I'm going to put the hanger on here so that you can see. Um, How it's going to hang, what it's going to look like, and that'll help me to to um, decide where I want to have the hat come up. Because I do want to give the dress bottom enough room to flow freely. So yeah, see, I have enough room that I could actually go right up to there, and then the dress bodice will come down underneath that. Okay, so I'm going to set the dress aside for now and we're going to work on, we have fibers everywhere, we're going to work on the hat. This one I'm just kind of winging it, I didn't really pre-plan this one, um, I kind of like that maybe, I don't know. So I think what we're going to do is take some, some muslin, if I have enough longer, long enough pieces left. I do. And we're going to create kind of a uh, shabby chic type hat band kind of thing with this. Again, I'm just going to dab some glue here and attach the strips of muslin.
Now this hat you could, and I actually thought about doing it for this project. Um, if you have any, um, you know, paper flowers or small fabric flowers, you could decorate this hat up as much as you wanted to. Um, I did not, I chose not to use any paper flowers because my goal for myself was to keep this as much fabric as I possibly could. It was just kind of a challenge that I, I had for me just to see how much I could keep this fabric. The, the paper flowers or the any other kind of flowers that you have um, would be gorgeous on this hat and you could turn it turn it into a, a springtime flowery hat, whatever you want to do with it. I dropped my flower, excuse me. Okay, I'm just going to cut this off. Another string. And just kind of glue that on there like that. Now, I'm not worrying about that meeting up exactly because what I'm going to do with this other piece of muslin is just make a bow to put on the hat. And I know there's probably, you could also make, um, you know, like a triple bow or a double bow. I'm just going to make a simple bunny bow, I like to call them, um, just to add on the back of this. Again, the shabby. I like the shabby, um, shabby feel of it. So I'm just going to cut those at an angle. We may have to adjust the length of this once we get it attached. And I'm just going to hot glue that right there. This hat is calling to me to do more, but again, and I may, after after I do this video, I'll probably continue to play with this. So if I do alter it or, or decide to add more flowers, I'll post pictures of it. And if you can think of things that, you know, might be kind of cool on here, um, let me know. I'm going to take some of these little rosettes. These are on a tool backing. I'm just, I cut some of them apart and I'm just going to randomly glue those around the edge of the hat. Again, not trying to measure, make sure it's perfect. Um, just letting it free flow. Coming out with whatever, however it tells me to go. That's kind of what art does. It tells you what it wants you to do as you play with it. At least it does me. I hope it's the I hope it's the um, the art telling me what to do. That could be scary. We are almost, at least for the purpose of this video, almost done. Um, with this particular project, and like I said, I will continue to play. I'm sure, because I can never, I never know when to get out of something. Leave it alone. Just stop it. So, that's my hat, and that's as much as I'm going to do with the hat for now. I just don't want to get it too fussy. So. I'm just going to glue this down. Now this one I will use a little more glue just to make sure that it's got good adhesion. Ouch. Glue hot. Should know when it's like open weave it might get a little warm on the fingers. 
again, fabric glue, um, anything that you would like to use, any, any of your favorite adhesives um, would work well. But because of this is already an hour long video, um, I didn't want to take the time, and I'm impatient. I like to see things done. Uh, so I used hot glue. So now we're going to add the dress on here and just using the hot glue on the bodice part only position it where you want it and just hold on to it for a second and I probably will have to you know like go back and maybe add some on the inside because once this is hanging you're really not going to to see the inside of the bodice um, if I were making a dress form bodice I would probably be a little more careful with with what I'm doing because it would be seen then so now I'm just going to randomly um, cut these pieces because I don't want them covering up the entire flower and now that it's laying on here flat and in position I can see where I need to uh, take off some length and as you can see I am not making these even they're not all the same length don't want a hard line just want it to flow okay I'm going to oh I have one more piece um, that I'm going to put on the bottom of this I was at a uh, Oh, a rummage sale and found a whole box of these beautiful you know these are real crystal pieces that I am going to hook on the bottom it'll give it some weight it'll add some sparkle and some interest to the piece and just give it that little bit of vintage because it is an antique crystal okay I'm going to move my camera up a bit so that I can hold this up so that you can see I am so bad at this camera angle thing we need to work on that. Here's the dress. There's the bottom. With the crystal. I will take pictures because this is annoying me, so I'm sure it is you. I'm not even sure if this part will make it in the video, honestly. Um, I will take a picture of this hanging on the wall so that you can full it, see it in full view. Um, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to join me in watching this video. Again, um, please be nice to each other. Be kind. Be supportive. Um, if you like this, please uh, like, leave your comments, subscribe, and if you'd like, share. God bless and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.